Hello everyone, we are going to start with the chapter <coughs> Albert Einstein at school by Patrick Pringle. Albert Einstein, all of you are aware of, is regarded as the greatest physicist since Newton. Uh, in most probably 1905, he propounded that famous theory of relativity and that was the reason most probably in 2005 uh, that year was declared as year of physics or science uh, to honor that particular theory. Though Albert Einstein is uh, known for his theory of relativity, but surprisingly he got his Nobel Prize for uh, his discovery on or his work on uh, photoelectric effect of the light. In the following extract which is a biography uh, by, which is a biography by Patrick Pringle, the young Einstein, the well-known biographer, described the circumstances which led to Albert Einstein's expulsion from a German school. In this extract, we also come across Einstein's idea about what education should be and what education is. So, the scene starts with the classroom when the history teacher asks Einstein in what year did the Prussians defeat the French at Waterloo now Prussians uh, Prussia is the ancient name of Germany as usual Einstein reply I don't know sir why don't you know you have been told it often enough I must have forgotten <clears throat> did you ever try to learn asked Mr. Braun no, sir, Albert replied with his unusual, uh, with his usual unthinking honesty. Why not? I can't see any point in learning dates. One can always look them up in a book. So, you see, uh, it must be reminding you of uh, some of the system which we also see all around us, wherein the evaluation is not based on the understanding of the things, Whereas evaluation is based on how well you are able to cram up, that is rot learning system, that you are cramming up and then when there is an exam, you just produce it on the paper. <clears throat> so uh, something like that. And that's what Einstein says, that what is, what is the point in learning the dates? One can always refer to the books. Now, this was an unusual reply, and Mr. Braun was speechless. You amaze me, Einstein. Don't you realize that one can always look most things up in books that applies to all the facts you learn at school? Every fact. And that is what is the point of Einstein. He says, yes, sir. Then I suppose you don't see any point in learning facts. Frankly, sir, I don't. There's no point in learning facts, because... If you want to know about certain facts, you can always refer to the books. You can always refer to the knowledge bank. But that was what was known and in some parts still known as the education, learning of the things. And that's why Mr. Brown asked, then you don't believe in education at all? Oh, yes, sir, I do. I don't think learning facts is education. <clears throat> Einstein says, yes, yes, I believe in education, but learning facts is not education. Then, this teacher who was of that particular system, he became sarcastic and he said, perhaps you will be so kind as to tell the Einstein theory of education. I think it's not facts that matter, but ideas, <clears throat> he said. I don't see the point in learning the dates of battles or even which of the armies killed more men. I'd be more interested in learning why those soldiers were trying to kill each other. Ideas, not facts. That is what is real education. But Mr. Brown was not ready to accept it. He said that he, we don't want a lecture from you, Einstein. You will stay in for an extra period. Although I don't imagine it will do you much good, it won't do to the school any good either. You are a disgrace. I don't know why you continue to come. It's not my wish, sir, Albert pointed out. 
straight away I will not say that. It is not my wish that I am coming to school. Then you are an ungrateful boy not to be ashamed of yourself. I suggest you ask your father to take you out. Now this type of situation is very much prevalent in our system scenario also. Though it is gradually being replaced by the real uh, education that is understanding of the things learning uh, the understanding of the ideas that, rather than emphasizing on learning the things by heart. Albert felt miserable when he left school that afternoon. Not that it had been a bad day. Most days were bad now. Anyway, but because he had to go back to the hateful place the next morning. Now this school did not become a place for pleasure. Where he was excited to go. Rather it became a place which he started hating. He only wished his father would take him away. But there was no point in even asking. He knew what the answer would be. He would have to stay until he had taken his diploma. He had no other way but to complete his diploma. Then only his father would allow him to leave the place. Going back to his lodgings did not cheer him up. His father had so little money to spare that Albert had been found a room in one of the poorest quarters of Munich. <clears throat> he did not mind the bad food and lack of comfort, or even the dirt and squalor, but he hated the atmosphere of slum violence. He was a very tender-hearted person, and violence always, always disturbed him. His landlady beat her children regularly, and every Saturday her husband came drunk and beat her. But at least you have a room of your own, which is more than I can say, said Yuri when he called round in the evening. Now one of the friends which he had, or only friend that he had, with whom he confided, was Yuri. He was his senior uh, doing something. Maybe he had uh, completed his diploma and all that. But he was the only one who was somewhat close to Einstein in Munich. And he said that, fine, you are better than others because you have a room. <clears throat> But Einstein had a different view. At least you live among civilized human beings, even if they are all poor students. He says that you are living with students, even though they are poor. They are civilized ones. But Yuri had a different idea. They are not at all civilized. Did you not hear that one of them was killed last week in a duel? Now, what is this duel? Duel is a fight between two. Similarly, we have another word, duet. Duet is two people singing together. And what happens to the one who killed him? Nothing, of course. He is even proud of it. His only worry is that authorities have told him not to fight any more duels. He is upset about this because he hasn't a single scar on his face to wear for the rest of his life as a badge of honor. So, Yuri showed him the real picture. Einstein had very high view of the students of higher studies over there, but he showed him the real picture that these, these students, the so-called civilized ones, they were more interested in duels than their studies. Ah, oh, exclaimed Albert, and these are the students. Well, you will be a student one day, said Yuri. I doubt it, said Albert glumly. I don't think I will ever pass the exams for the school diploma. He told his cousin Elsa the same time, the same next time she came to Munich. <clears throat> Normally she lived, in, she lived in Berlin where her father had a business. So Elsa advised Albert, I'm sure you could learn enough to pass the exams, Albert, if you tried. I know lots of boys who are much more sp stupid than you are who get through. They say you don't have to know anything. You don't have to understand what you are taught. Just be able to repeat it in exams. <clears throat> the reality of the system of that time, rot learning. You don't have to understand what you have taught. You, have, you, have, you should have the capability of repeating the things in the exams. But Albert said, that's the whole trouble, I'm not good at learning things by heart. You don't need to be good at it. Anyone can learn like a parrot, you just don't try. And yet I always see you with a book under your arm, added Elsa, what is the one you are reading? A book on geology. Geology, rocks and things, do you learn that? No, we have hardly any science at school. Then why are you studying it? 
because I like it. Isn't that a good enough reason? Elsa sighed. You are right, of course, Albert, he, she said, but it won't help with your diploma. So Albert had, from the very beginning, interest in the books of science, and he said, he said that, why I am reading it, even though it is not the part of the syllabus, because I like it, and that was a good enough reason. Apart from books and science, his only comfort was music, and he played his violin regularly until his landlady asked him to stop. So apart from book of science, his another interesting, uh, the thing which he took interest was playing violin, and he played it regularly until his landlady asked him to stop. That wailing gets on my nerves, he said. There's enough noise in this house with all the kids howling. Albert was tempted to point out that most of the time it was she who made them howl. But he decided it was better to say nothing. He thought that if he would say something, he would be asked to leave the place. <coughs> now when he met next time, Yuri, he said that I must get away from here. After six months alone in Munich, it is absurd that I should go on like this. In the end, it will turn out I have been wasting my father's money and everyone's time. It will be better for all if I stop now. And then, what will you do? Yuri asks. I don't know. If I go to Milan, I am my, I'm afraid my father will send me back. Unless. And then, suddenly he was struck up with an idea. His eyes gleamed, shined. And he immediately asked Yuri. Yuri, do you know any friendly doctors? <coughs> I know a lot of medical students and some of them are friendly. Doctor? No. I have never had enough to go to one. But why? Why you want to know about a doctor? And now here, Albert reveals his plan. Suppose that I had a nervous breakdown. Suppose a doctor would say, it's bad for me to go to school and I need to get right away from it. Huh? See what sort of innovative ideas he had from the very beginning. Even he knows that he will not be allowed by his father to go back. So there was only one thing. On medical grounds, if he can be excused. And what would be that medical ground? That if he had a nervous breakdown. And if the doctor would certify it. But Yuri was apprehensive. I can't imagine a doctor saying that. Said Yuri. I must try, said Albert, to find a doctor who specializes in nerves. There are plenty of them, Yuri told him. He hesitated for a moment and then added, rather reluctantly. I'll ask some of the students if they know one, if you like. Will you? Oh, thank you, Yuri. Albert's eyes were shining. Wait a moment. I haven't found one yet. Don't be too happy. I haven't found one yet. But Einstein was sure. Oh, but you will. And if I do, I don't know if he will be willing to help you. He will, he will, declared Albert. I am going to have a real nervous breakdown to make it easier for him. He laughed merrily. I have never seen you looking less nervous, remarked Yuri. A day or two at school will soon put that right, Albert assured him. Certainly, he had lost his high spirits when Yuri saw him next. He, after a few days, when Yuri saw him... <coughs> He was almost on the verge of nervous breakdown. I can't stand it any longer, he said. I really shall have a nervous breakdown that will satisfy any doctor. So he was really in a very bad condition. And he, he, he said that he was on the verge of nervous breakdown. And anyone who will check him will certainly certify that he certainly was on the verge of nervous breakdown. Yuri said, keep it up then. I have found a doctor for you. You have? Alva's face lit up. Oh, good. When can I see him? I have an appointment for you for tomorrow evening. Here is the address. He handed Albert a piece of paper. Dr. Ernst Wheel. Is he a specialist in nervous troubles? Asked Albert. Not exactly. As a matter of fact, he only qualified as a doctor last week. You may even be his first patient. You knew him as a student then, huh? so he was your friend, or he is your friend. I have known Ernst for years. Yuri hesitated for a few moments. He is not a fool, he warned Albert. What do you mean? 
Don't try to pull the wool over his eyes. Now what is this trying to pull over someone's eyes? To deceive someone, to cheat someone. Be frank with him, but don't pretend you have, you have got what you haven't. Not that you deceive anyone. You are the world's worst liar. So you recautioned him that he should be very honest while discussing the things with the doctor. Albert spent the next day wondering what to tell the doctor. When the time arrived for his appointment, he had worried over it so much that he really was quite nervous. And he was now uh, waiting for the doctor whole day. And the next day when he had appointment in the evening, by the time he was quite nervous that how he will talk to the doctor about the whole thing.